Image copyright Reuters image caption Ingvar Kamprad said there were many reasons why he loved his business The Swedish founder of the IKEA furniture chain, Ingvar Kamprad, has died at the age of 91, the company has announced. Mr. Kamprad, who pioneered flat-pack furniture, died at his home in Smaland, IKEA confirmed in a statement. The company said that Mr. Kamprad was one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the 20th century. The billionaire, who was born in 1926 in Smaland, founded IKEA at the age of 17. He used some money his father had given him as a gift for performing well at school despite his dyslexia. Mr. Kamprad PC passed away at his home, IKEA's statement said, he worked until the very end of his life, staying true to his own motto that most things remain to be done, it added. Mr. Kamprad eventually stepped down from the company's board in 2013, at the age of 87. Ingvar Kamprad was a great entrepreneur of the typical southern Swedish kind, hardworking and stubborn, with a lot of warmth and a playful twinkle in his eye, the company said. His company's designs became popular in part because of their simplicity and value. Mr. Comprod is reported to have come up with the idea of flat-pack furniture after Ing an employee removed the legs from a table in order to fit it into a customer's car. Furniture designer Jeff Banks said that Mr. Comprod's creations radically changed how people made and designed products for the home. People have tried to reproduce and copy that, but unsuccessy, he said. Mr. Banks added that the designs produced and sold through the retailer made good use of recyclable products, adding that Mr. Comprod was head and shoulders above the rest. Image copyright Getty Images Image Caption The tycoon said he built the furniture business on the local ethos of his home province, Smell and Mr. Comprod was renowned for his devotion to frugality, reportedly driving an old Volvo and traveling by economy class. In a 2016 interview with Swedish television channel TV4, Mr. Comprod said that it was in the nature of Smell and to be thrifty. If you look at me now, I don't think I'm wearing anything that WASNT bought at a flea market, he said. He told the channel that he built his business on a local ethos. We have smell and in the blood, and we know what a crone is, even though it is not as much as it was when we bought candy and went to elementary school, he said, referring to the Swedish currency. People took to social media on Sunday to pay their respects to the greatest Swedish entrepreneur to have ever lived. Swedish Foreign Minister Margot Wallström tweeted her condolences, saying that Mr. Comprod had put Sweden on the map. IKEA, key facts IKEA started in 1943 and now has 389 stores worldwide. The name comes from Mr. Comprod's initials IK, together with the name of the farm he grew up on, Elm Terity in the nearby village of Gunnery Day. The company's retail sales totaled 36.4 billion euros, 43 billion dollars, 30 billion pounds in 2016. Its flat pack furniture became iconic both for its affordability and for its picture-based assembly instructions. IKEA has remained privately owned under a Dutch trust operated by the company. Comprod family. Its complex business structure has drawn controversy and the European Commission said last year that it had launched an investigation into IKEA's tax arrangements. The European Green Party said that the arrangement had allowed the company to avoid paying some 1 billion euros in tax between 2009 and 2014, a spokesman for Dutch-based Inter IKEA, one of the company's two divisions, said that the company had been taxed in accordance with EU rules. In an interview in the 1980s, Mr. Comprod said that his vision for IKEA was that it would be a company that would make life easier for its customers. In the later years of his life, Mr. Comprod had faced questions over his past links to the Nazis. The tycoon revealed some elements of his past in a book in 1988, admitting that he was a close friend of the Swedish fascist activist Perang Dahl, and a member of his new Swedish movement between 1942 and 1945. He said that his involvement was youthful stupidity and the greatest mistake of his life. But a 2011 book by Elizabeth Asbrink alleged details beyond what Mr. Comprod had previously admitted. She wrote that he was an active recruiter for a Swedish Nazi group, and stayed close to sympathizers well after World War II. At the time a spokesman for Mr. Comprod said he had long admitted flirting with fascism, but that there were now no Nazi sympathizing thoughts in Ingvar's head whatsoever.